on backflower uh, therapy. So what we did in the first five parts was uh, looked at, uh, we've spoken about under depression, we've spoken about sweet chestnut as a remedy for a certain mood, a mood of absolute hopelessness, extreme sadness, extreme despondency. So we've spoken of uh, those as remedies for moods or situational remedies. Right? Mood or situational remedies would mean that it's a temporary Thing. So that there is a moment when you are extremely depressed or there is a small period of time where you are sad and then eventually you get over it. So that is not a type of personality, it is not a sad person in general, he just happens to be sad at that point in time. Type remedies are where you are talking of the state of that particular state of being is more or less constant. So which is why you would uh, have the type of a personality as being you know, someone is aggressive or someone is very soft. So that's something that's constant more or less throughout your life. So that's what we mean by a type remedy. So we are just differentiating between situational and type remedies. And uh, the reason why Dr. Bach attempted to classify these eventually as type remedies is because he said that if a person's natural type is out of balance, it will cause problems in terms of mental and perhaps even physical health. So if as a, let us say, a, a natural state of being for me, for example, if it is very uh, impatient, very aggressive, very task oriented, if something inhibits that type, I will probably not feel very good about myself because that is my natural state of being and therefore, if I am forced to be passive or submissive, I may not like it and somewhere I will emotionally and mentally start reacting to it. So that was the attempt behind type remedies to identify what is the natural state of being of that person and how do you maintain a balance considering that type in mind. So that was uh, the reasoning behind classifying 12 of those remedies as type remedies. So let us look at the 12 uh, type remedies. Uh, as we said these are also called the 12 healers. Uh, 12 healers mainly because uh, any kind of uh, any kind of treatment that you are doing with the bark flowers, it always helps to understand the person's core type and then balance all other remedies around the core. The idea being you want the person uh, to be to be brought back into balance according to whatever their specific type is. So it always helps to balance any other remedy with the type remedy. Unless you are using it for something very situational and superficial, for example, if there is a scratch and you are applying crab apple, yeah, then you do not need to bother with what is the type remedy, it is just a superficial wound and there is no personality imbalance that is happening. But if you are treating something like an ex extended state of sadness or depression or a certain uh, frame of mind that the person is not comfortable with, it is always a good idea to first identify the type and then balance the other remedies along with the type. Let the type be like the, the spinal thing in the remedy that you are giving the person. Right? And usually if you are making any kind of combination of remedies for that person, it always helps to have the type as a core ingredient in that combination. So there are these 12 types, we will look at each of them today throughout the talk. So the first is uh, agrimony. Uh, agrimony is the type of a person who you will normally find is very cheerful, very you know the life of the party kind of a person. However, it is also the sort of a person who will, who finds it very difficult to express difficulties or sorrow or sadness. So there will always be a smiling face and you will never figure out that the person probably has problems in his or her life. That is the kind, that is the agrimony type. You will typically find a cheerful mask but behind that mask there is a lot of problems which the person finds it very difficult to share in general. And therefore these are also the kind of people who would tend towards substance abuse. It, they tend to be alcoholics, tend to have drug addiction or whatever, any other sort of addiction because they are looking for an anchor in some way because they are not able to share sadness with peace, sad sadness or in, in general problems with people around them, they would look for another way of expressing it. 
So, how do you identify the agrimony type is, uh, if you absolutely don't know the person and you're trying to work with them with remedies? It's always a good idea to ask what's your general kind of interaction with people. Do you share uh, things easily with friends or family or people that are, that are close to you? If you happen to have a problem, what is it that you normally would do about it? Would you share and get it out of your system? Do you keep it to yourself? What, what's the general? Uh, tendency to react, react. So, if, if you ask those questions, you will typically eventually be able to find out the type. Apart from, of course, the very overt indicators like body language, they always give an indication as to the type. Okay. An agrimony person is very usually a very cheerful, smiling, pleasant, very sociable sort of a person. So that's the agrimony type. Uh, so if you're using uh, remedies for a person of this type, the idea is to bring the person back into this particular state because that's the natural state of being. Right? So uh, which doesn't mean you want the person to be cheerful and not share his or her problems, but the remedy helps the person to actually open up and start sharing. So the, while the cheerfulness remains, the person on, in the background also opens up to sharing and finding healthy ways of venting rather than tending towards substance abuse or any other form of abuse. So that's the agrimony type. In general, otherwise, if you remember in the previous uh, talks, we've spoken also of agrimony as a remedy in general, very useful for back spinal problems. Uh, if you're using it for any kind of a shake up for a person, like if a person's, you know, stuck with a particular problem or is not moving or you don't find progress in terms of healing. Again, it's a remedy that can be used to give a slight, slight kind of a shake up. But in that case, always use agrimony in combination with it's mustard sort of and inflexible, uh, rigid ideas. Not so much rigid ideas, but it I've found that it, it's usually helpful where you know you, you're working on a certain issue and you, you reach a break point where it's it's difficult to move there. So at that point, agrimony tends to be useful. It kind of gives that shake up so that the person is forced to move on. Yeah, sort of a very heavy wake up kind of a call. But if you're doing using it for that, please balance it with star of Bethlehem and mustard to give that softer effect, like a cushioning kind of a thing. You can use it even directly. It's just that it tends to be very jarring at times. So <laughs> that's the agrimony type. The second one is um, centauri. Uh, centauri, if you've, um, if you remember earlier, we'd spoken of centauri also as a remedy that's used for shielding. Like the way crab apple is used for cleansing, centauri is a shielding remedy. So let's say you're working with someone on energy healing for example where you where you tend to expose your energies it centauri acts as a good shield so if you have a couple of drops of centauri before you get into a session it tends to shield your energies that's on the usage side of the remedy but as a type the centauri type is the sort of a person the reason why the remedy acts as a shield is also because of the typology of it so the centauri type is a sort of a person who finds it very difficult to maintain boundaries and therefore, in the process, will be the sort of a person who will, you know, if I'm the centauri type, I'll probably take on your problems. I'll, I'll ensure that you're able to use whatever resources I have. Yeah, you can use my money, you can use my bag, you can use this. So there is a very little personal space for that person. Not because a person doesn't want space, a person does want, does want it, but finds it very difficult to be assertive. It's a sort of a person who will find it very difficult to say no. So if you ask for something and even if the person's in a very difficult situation, he or she will go ahead and try and help you. That's the centauri type, overly generous and overly helpful to a degree where it's harming the person. Okay? Sometimes you do need to learn to draw lines, but this person finds it very difficult to draw lines. That's the centauri type. And the centauri type is usually very easy to identify. If you know the person well enough, you, you know that they find it difficult to maintain the boundaries. And boundaries in any sense, it could be 
personal space boundaries it could be in terms of emotional boundaries where he or she lets anybody affect him or her so all sorts of boundaries then you have serato the serato type is um, what you might classify as a kind of a person who is very low in confidence very low in self esteem and therefore even if you she's made a decision the person will always look for somebody for to advise to say okay i think i should do this you think i should do this maybe i should not what do you think let me find let me follow your decision rather than my own that's the centauri type somebody who's constantly looking for suggestions looking for advice looking for other people's opinion rather than one's own the balance for this person would be if the person is able to trust his or her own in inner wisdom gut feel and say that okay i'm capable of making a distance that's a balanced uh, serato state but to bring the person to the balance you need to be able to identify the type and also look at what are the other things in the environment which stops the person from achieving that balance so again serato type is usually identifiable by language the, this person is usually asking questions about what do you think of me am i making the right decisions uh what's your opinion on this should i go here or go there that, that, that's typically the language that you would find a serato person using and also going with that the rest of the body language also flows you'll find normally the shoulders drooping person looking down the, the body language tends to follow the type then you've got <laughs> chikri chikri is um, what we usually term as the mother energy remedy in 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 general senses uh, usage wise pretty useful for cold cough kind of situations as a type the chikri type is the very uh, you know the possessive mother kind of a person so people who are very loving but at the same time very demanding in terms of you know, sometimes you will find mothers telling their children look at this person this person's getting more marks than you why can't you get this it's it's not so much to do with the child's capabilities or talents just that this person is doing it you've got to do it and again not in the sense of being critical about the child the intention of the person is i love you and therefore you have to be good <laughs> it's not so much about whether the person is capable of doing it or not it's just that they, because they are so loving they want the best for whoever is it that they care for and in that uh, in that whole circle they tend to be extremely demanding and they don't quite realize it that the intention is very good they want the other person to do well or have good things in their lives but somewhere they tend to be they tend to occupy the person's space a little too much without quite realizing it and usually these are also people who are very possessive so if i'm a chikuri type and i'm your friend and i find you being very close friends with somebody else i will have a problem with that and not because the intention is jealousy it's just that i want to ensure that 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 person is really good and you have to have a really good friend because you are my friend so there there is a sense of protection that goes with being the chikuri type ah uh, for not so much insecurity as much as just sheer possessiveness that because i care for you i shouldn't lose lose you in any way and i have to have the best for you you should act in this way only. yeah overbearing yeah overbearing. overbearing and they don't intend to be dominating okay. unlike a vervain type who yeah they very protective more than overbearing <laughs> but is other people may find it overbearing because they're constantly trying to protect and sometimes you don't want that yeah, kind of protection yeah, yeah. although they the chikri type the intention is never really to invade the intention is purely protection it tends to balance out they tend to get a little aware of the fact that i'm doing this and therefore while i continue to love you i will trust that things will be okay with you so it brings them back into that balance climactus so <laughs> climat is again easy to identify the type it's the daydreaming kind of people 
body language is usually you know, the eyes looking far into the distance looking up normally that that's typically the eye li- uh, uh, body language they find it difficult to stay in reality it's for for them life is about their dreams and what the possibilities are rather than what the ground reality is and the fact that let's say taxes need to be paid or something needs to be filed they'll they'll find it very difficult to relate to mundane things because they prefer to live in a world of fantasy so you ask them to do things like go deposit a check somewhere or file your returns and things like that it's very difficult for them to f- figure out because those are not things that they really want to do they'd rather live in their d- dream world due to last moment hmm due to last moment last moment is it file Huh. Example, uh, they don't like this yeah they don't like the you know the regular kind of things which are boring and mundane they, they don't like that they'd rather live in their dream so world most people may be creative also they can be creative the whole point of in fact uh, clematis is also a remedy used to generate creativity creative. but the way it does it is it actually and grounds yeah, them grounds, yeah. grounds them and says okay this is the reality face it get it done and now use your energies for whatever else you have to use it for so the 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 way clematis balances is to bring the person back into the ground reality and and at the same time say that it's okay it's not all that bad it doesn't have to be a very boring task enjoy it while you're at it and then clear up the space for dreaming whatever you have to dream so that's the clematis it's a good remedy for grounding in general beyond the type part of it gentian um the gentian type uh, you normally need to know the person to identify this type it's not a very overt kind of a type it's for people who tend to be very uh, discouraged even if there's a minor failure a major failure all of us would possibly respond but these are people where even if small things go wrong you get a little late somewhere they'll it'll have a huge impact on them there's 15 minute traffic delay and they'll get all worked up and sad about it that everything's going wrong in my life we can sensitive yeah extremely sensitive to a very extreme degree which is not really functional Yes, so you're going to a meeting one hour away, and somewhere you get ten minutes delayed. All right, you deal with the situation, get done with it. Here, they will tend to get depressed because of it, and in the process, they'll ruin the meeting because they are so worked up about it. That that's the gentian type who'll get despondent and tend to stay despondent for a while. It's not that they'll get over it. they they'll, they'll keep ruminating over it and think about oh my god i got 10 minutes delayed maybe because of this the client has thought this and because of that i i'm doing this so there is a spiral reaction to it which is not a very healthy sign and there's a tendency to do this so when we talk of the type remedy you're, you're saying that there is a tendency to exhibit a certain kind of a pattern of behavior so the gentian type is those types who'll mind every small setback every small failure and then stay with it and say that nothing else can go right in my life so gentian helps to snap them out of that state and say it's all right over done now move on to the next thing impatience pretty easy to identify as the name of the remedy also suggests people who are very impatient in terms of getting things done usually are very hot tempered yeah. the small things go wrong and you'll find them shouting and yelling and screaming that's the impatience <laughs> variety or uh, usually also have a low tolerance for differences so if you don't do things my way i'll have a problem with it with very low tolerance for any kind of differences it could be the way you work or it could be the way you talk or anything but if it's different from me i have a problem <laughs> that's the impatience uh, variety so as a remedy impatience tends to bring them into balance in terms of saying it's all right to have different people around and people may do things differently that doesn't mean the world is wrong it's so it impatience brings in 
that kind of balance and also brings in a lot more tolerance of others. So, you do not keep reacting and losing your temper every time there, there, there is something that goes wrong. In patterns variety, you will find it in terms of their body language, the typology is very eminent, they are very aggressive body language, arms flailing all around and very usually a high volume in terms of voice, high speed of talking, a lot of aggression that is very overt in the personality usually. Of course, you may also find the passive aggressive variety of impatience who will not show it as much, but it shows in terms of the body language. Uh, it depends on wh wh what if you're talking of it as a type. Well, you can impatience. Uh, if you're looking at calming the person down, perhaps Star of Bethlehem, just to you know, calm down. If it depends on what the issue is. Larch is more for confidence. Larch is more for for a clematis kind of a person where the confidence or self-esteem is low, large helps to immediately boost up confidence and self-beliefs. Impatience, maybe you want to use a soothing kind of a remedy. So, Star of Bethlehem is an option, Olive is another option that you can look at, combining it with. Mimulus, now, Mimulus, if you remember the Emotion group, it's it's a it's a remedy for fear. Uh, mimulus is very specifically for fear of known things, something that I, I I know what is scaring me. For example, let's say I know I have a phobia for heights, or I know I have a phobia for water. So known things which scare a person that that's the mimulus, the use of mimulus for fear. Now mimulus as a type remedy uh, is for a person who tends to be fearful of a lot of things in general. Right? So, you talk to a person, let us say you talk to a person and say alright, let us go for a trip to Kashmir. The person will probably talk about, oh god, there is so many mountains, there is so many height, what, what happens if there is an accident, what happens if a terrorist kills me. And all sorts of fears start coming up. The person finds it very difficult to look for the positives or possibilities in a certain opportunity. So, the first reaction is always to think of what will go wrong in that opportunity. So, even, even if you are talking of a small thing like saying alright, let us go for a movie, the person <laughs> will tend to look for, oh probably we will not get tickets or maybe there is a lot of traffic, parking name will a whole lot of things that will go wrong. That is the first tendency and the first reaction for the mimulus type of a person. And uh, usually also personality wise, they tend to be very reserved, very shy, find it difficult to talk to people. Uh, there is very often I found a very innate fear of rejection. The shyness comes from that fear of rejection that, oh if I go talk to that new person and what if he or she does not like me. So, that there is that element tends to usually be present, not necessarily, but I have usually found that is a very typical characteristic of the mimulus type. So, how In, do you know hmm? hmm? It tends to balance by saying that you do not have to fear everything, instead let me look for opportunities rather than looking for what can go wrong and what will affect me in a bad way. And in that process, it brings in confidence in the person to say it is ok, I, I do not have to look for danger everywhere, things could be fine as well. If you are using it specifically for fear, then it helps to know what the fear is about and then administer. Can be, can be yeah, it, it, because usually this person also lacks in confidence, so you can give large also. But it helps to first tackle the fear and then start supplementing it with large. If you are using it purely to treat fear, make sure that the person is consciously aware of the fear in terms of what fear it is. The next step is you can Yeah. Like with rock rose, rock rose is for fear of things that are unknown, mimulus is for the fear of the known things. Similar to Aspen, Aspen also works well with fear of what is 
normally known not so much in a tangible way but in terms of knowing that okay this situation or this person tends to cause fear Okay. Rockrose again a fear remedy in terms of type Rockrose is the type who will have fear of abstract things and therefore the, the personality tends to be scared of opportunities be, not because of a tangible reason so like the mimulus variety if you tell them okay let's go to Kashmir they'll give you tangible reasons as to why, why not to go the Rockrose variety it's very difficult for them to even give a reason they just feel scared, oh my god, we have to go on a trip. Mm. That, that's the sort of reaction. They tend to be terrified of many things and the Rockrose variety of fear is the, you know, like the sort of fear of, fear of ghosts and fear of finding a dead body somewhere and fear of horror movies and something that's intangible. It's not a particular thing that causes fear. It's not like, I know I can't swim and therefore I'm afraid of water. That That's not the rock rose variety. This is very vague, very unknown sort of fear. So if you give me a new opportunity as a rock rose type, my reaction would be, I don't know what this opportunity is about and therefore I'm afraid. That, that's the rock rose kind of fear. Okay. So like let's say if you're asking a 10 standard student to choose a line of uh, stream for study, I have never done this and therefore I don't know how to choose it because I know I will go wrong. It is not that there is reason to go wrong but just that I don't know and therefore I am afraid. That is the rock rose, variety, rock rose type. They find it very difficult to try anything out of the ordinary, anything new, meet new people because there is a fear of the unknown. And usually comes with a fear of the abstract, ghosts and spirits and things like that. Scleranthus. Now, scleranthus variety, normally if you talk to them for a while, you will find it easy to identify. These are people who are, who usually find it very difficult to maintain uh, balance in terms of, let us say, making a decision. Usually very indecisive. There is a, they will come up with options. So, you give them a problem, they will say, yeah, we have option 1, option 2, option 3. But you ask them to choose something, very difficult for them. Okay. Uh, and therefore, in the process, these are the type of people who will forever postpone a decision because they, don't, they, they find it difficult to come to a decision. So, they would rather sit on the fence rather than go one way or the other. So, you will usually find these people being very ambivalent in terms of being good to opposite parties or <laughs> not taking a stand, trying to be sweet to everybody around and in the process, it, life gets difficult for them. They get into conflicts because they don't make a decision. That's the scleranthus types. But what is the difference between the serato and These also, they cannot make a decision. Ha, but serato is more of, uh, say, serato type can make a decision. It's just that they'll find it difficult to go ahead. Like, let's say if I'm a student, I'll say that I want to do science, but you tell me if I'm right. That That's the serato variety. Scleranthus will say, yeah, I can do science, I can also do uh, commerce and I think I am good at both now, both have maths, now how do I decide? That, that, that's the scleranthus which will keep weighing decisions. I find it, uh, if you have make an astrological correlation, I find scleranthus a very liberal kind of a remedy, constantly trying to balance and say, ha, this is good here, this is good here, this is good here, this is good here, now how do I choose? Then that's the scleranthus variety. Serato will always have a decision. You ask them what is it that you want in your heart of hearts, they, they will have an answer to it. It's just that they will find it difficult to implement their own answer. Here they find it difficult to come to an answer. And also therefore, because of that, the scleranthus tendency is always to procrastinate. Aaj nahi kal karenge, kal nahi parso karenge. There is a tendency because they don't want to take a decision there. So, it is good for procrastination also? Scleranthus as a remedy, yeah, tends to. Uh, 
Scleranthus, maybe sometimes you want to also look at impatience there. Balance it because you want to we want to really speed up the person to some degree. Impatience can perhaps bring that balance and raise the speed wherever needed. Okay. Vervain, <laughs> typical type A personality, very aggressive, very stubborn, very domineering. Here, like the chicory variety may seem like invading a lot of space, may seem dominating, but their intention is not to dominate. These guys enjoy being leaders, these guys enjoy dominating. Right? They are usually natural leaders also in that sense, they do have capability to initiate things and get people together and get things done. Uh, the, the trouble with an imbalanced vervain is they can be very stubborn. They will hold on to their decision and not give up even if it is proven wrong by several others. So, uh, the balanced vervain is, is a type A, is still a type A personality which means they will still be aggressive, go-getters, very ambitious, but at the same time have compassion for other people's things and also listen to others views and opinions and take that into consideration. That is the balanced vervain. They will not bully. Yeah. They tend, if an imbalanced vervain will tend to bully and enjoy it <laughs> because the, the, the natural tendency is to dominate. So, that is the vervain variety. Vervain is very obvious with all, in all varieties, you will find it in body language, the way they talk, the way they lead. They, they, usually you will find vervain talking in terms of orders, not in terms of please and thank you, they will give orders and commands. They want to be go by nature, they are go getters, they want to achieve. There is a huge amount of achievement orientation. They sometimes do not realize how they are doing it. People around them may not want to be led, but they, they lead anyway. So, then that is the vervain variety. A natural tendency is to be very ambitious, and you will see it in all very loud voice, usually commanding, not really requesting. That is the vervain variety. Sometimes strong headed, so you will need, it, it takes a lot to convince a vervain type to <laughs> move away from their decision. Yeah, to some degree. They, they believe they know what they want and they will go get it regardless of what the world thinks. But yeah, at the same time, good leadership capabilities naturally, it is just that they need to hone it in terms of how to use it. And the final type is the water violet type. Uh, water violet types are usually very, um, they are quite insightful, quite talented, but they may appear very aloof and withdrawn or what you may typically call proud. Right? So, they, 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 it may, they may come across as people who, who think they are better than the others over above average and therefore, they may not want to interact with the <laughs> lower or run of the mill kind of characters. So, that is the water violet variety. You will normally find them being very reserved and very difficult to communicate with or break ice with. Uh, it is not that they do not like to socialize, they like to socialize, but they would rather be approached rather than them approaching. They will find it very difficult to by themselves go and initiate communication with somebody or by themselves go ask for help. Uh, more than ego is they are very proud. How can I ask for help or how can I, how can I say that I need assistance? <laughs> that is the water violet personality. So, usually they find it very difficult to ask for help. And in that process, they, they start feeling alone or lonely also sometimes because they, they do not reach out even if they should reach out, they find it very tough to reach out. So, normally it is a sort of people, a person who you will, you know, if you go to the person and say, okay, I think you are in trouble, do you want help? No, I will handle it. Uh, water, they, water violet tends to grow in marshy, marshy. sort of uh, soil, very, where there is a lot of uh, water element in the ground. That is the water violet variety. By nature also they are aloof. Yeah, yes, they are away from, they, they do not grow in. Yes. Yeah. 
In fact, that, that's, if you remember the previous uh, lectures, we've also spoken of the nature of the plant and the flower yeah, also right. talks a lot about what the utility of the remedy is. If you look at the 12 types, the interesting thing, although Dr. Bach never quite uh, commented on it, pretty much all these uh, remedies are in the yellow to blue spectrum. They are either blue or yellow, there, there are a couple of them which are in the lavender violet spectrum, none, none of them are the red, pink, orange kind of flowers. I mean, you, I mean we'll like we will possibly explore that from the color therapy al angle also later, you know, probably in the next part of the series. Because what I found is most of the, the healer variety, they tend to act on the upper chakras. And if you have to corroborate it with the chakric system, none of them act on the lower chakras. It's usually solar plexus upward that the effect of the first type remedies is. Now, I'm not quite sure <laughs> what that means in terms of correlation. It's, it's just something that as we work with the remedies we keep discovering. So maybe upper side is because of the uh, mental side. Perhaps, yeah, because the personality the largely, the emotional yeah, emotional yeah, emotion. yeah, largely because both the emotional the center, and uh, yeah, and, uh, both the intellectual and the emotional centers are here and that yeah. primarily constitutes maybe, personality. Yeah. Perhaps yes. that's the reason why most of these flowers tend to hit. In, in that Can area. Can it be possible that uh, one type, uh, one variety, like one type mm -hmm. personality mm -hmm. can have uh, traits of another Yeah, type. yeah, very much. Can be, uh, Usually there is a core type, type and then yeah, you will also find all other sorts of reactions, yeah, certainly. Like you will often find a vervain looking at, looking like an impatiens type because the, because of the dominant. The remedy is given in many combinations. The combinations also, yeah. Because one tends to lead to another yes. characteristic, but there is usually a core type which is very identifiable. So when you, if you are using this for healing, it makes sense to first establish the type and then work all the other remedies around the type so that you know finally what to balance it with. So end of every round of treatment or whatever, you know that this is where you want the person back in a balanced state. So. And even if you think the person's current state is very different from the actual, the core type, always attempt to bring the person back into that core balance because that that's the natural state of being in health. And we can go through this uh, type of person. Individual can also go like stage. You, you mean like the type evolving? Because hmm. ultimately we are some total officer. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I mean, all of us exhibit all kinds of things at yeah, different. Uh, we are all human <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. No, it's just that the core type tends to be more predominant yeah. than the others. It's not that we won't exhibit other yes. types. All of us do it at different points in time in life, depending on the situations also. But there's usually a certain natural balance, and the, the typology is primarily what's the natural balance for that particular person. So, if the natural balance is, let's say, vervain, which is very ambitious, go-getter kind of a thing, then the person will be in health in that state of being. If you're trying to make the person very soft and smooth and submissive, <laughs> that's not the natural health of it. May be good for other people around, but that's not the natural healthy state for that person. If the person is forced to be in that state, he or she will probably start show, show, showing some psychosomatic symptoms. So it's always good to identify the natural type and then ge get on with the thing. If you're treating for depression or extreme case of sadness or something, it, it may be slightly more difficult to establish what the typology is. Spend a little more time with the person to see what the natural normal state of being is. You can normally if you ask the person about how were you like when you were at the most successful stage of your life or something, then it's normally easier to establish the typology because that's usually the peak performance state is normally the natural state. So you should try and establish the type first and then go around with combinations and if you're combining it's always a good idea to have the type remedy as the base and combine other things around it. And of course you can also use these remedies independently regardless of the type but the good utility in terms of establishing the typology. Any questions? What way they can be used means by 
Hmm? 